Et tu dois. Paul, you are the representative of the City League, and since uh, in this Congress the team is uh, we and City, what what is uh, the attitude of the general public uh, towards uh, the City matters uh, as far as the United States are concerned? Just uh, to have uh, your own idea, do you think that uh, the public interest towards uh, the UFO problem may be positively used also to let people understand the importance of SETI? In fact, in Italy, this is the normal attitude, that is to make research on both the two things and to see what may the results be. And uh, so you think that uh, the improvement of SETI techniques may lead us to positive results in the near future? A final question. Uh, four years ago, uh, we had our, as our guest here, uh, Frank Drake, the father of SETI research. He was very surprised to see that uh, uh, we treated uh, um, more or less at the same time uh, SETI research and serious UFO research, and uh, told us that. Uh, he investigated even UFO cases uh, in the United States. Uh, did you know this? Thank you. Okay. The camera people want two things. To <clears throat> Peter, this is the second time you are here for a congress like this. Um, and we are happy of this. What's your opinion about uh, this congress? It's, it's a very good question. I'm here for the second time. And... Uh, 
I have found that Italy is developing into one of the major places in Europe for doing SETI research. Uh, if you were looking at the observatory of uh, Medicina, uh, which Stelio is running, uh, the work they're doing with SETI is really wonderful. Uh, most of the work's been done in the United States, and now the center for SETI research is forming in Italy, which is something very, very important indeed. Uh, I come to uh, San Marino to meet the key people uh, who are doing SETI research uh, in Europe, and it is for me a very, very important meeting indeed. That's why I'm here for the second time. Uh, another important thing, I am meeting people from a totally different direction. There are people who are interested in UFO research, which uh, I am open-minded to. The thing that is disturbing me a little bit about UFO research is uh, it is in its, basic, uh, its basics at the moment. Uh, it is based on observational reports from people who are not trained, and it is also uh, video information. And this is a very good basis to go on further to start doing real scientific research. With very simple equipment, it's possible to do observations parallel to video observations, which may be able to give us some very good scientific data. So with a bit of luck, uh, working SETI people working together with UFO people, it's going to be possible to uh, help both directions uh, with experience that, that uh, both groups have got. So that's one of the, the main things for coming here. It's a, a very, very good meeting indeed. You, you saw that uh, from the standpoint of the public, people is uh, getting more and more interested, not only in uh, the UFO question, but also in SETI and uh, this uh, is um, extremely impressive because uh, normally SETI was considered by general public uh, like uh, an elite research now it seems that uh, people coming more and more to our congress uh, show that uh, they don't consider mm -hmm. this any longer yeah uh, you, you're quite right uh, as the president of the European Radio Astronomy Club, uh, I one day had an, a request from one of my members, who was a very uh, famous professor in Europe. He said to me, through the European Radio Astronomy Club, I would like to do SETI research because it is not possible in my own institute. So that's the day I started thinking, hmm, SETI, I may have the wrong attitude to SETI and I started positively looking at SETI and I found a very, very high science behind it. I'm obviously a scientist and I'm interested in, in scientific tools and scientific results. And SETI, a few years ago, used to be a very suspicious branch of science. Today, with my help in Europe, uh, the Europeans are seeing SETI as just simply a branch of radio astronomy. So SETI is being accepted uh, in Europe as just any other branch of, of uh, radio astronomy. We've got it easy because when we look into space, we exist, we have high technology. You were looking at me today uh, over a television screen. We have developed on this planet such technologies. It is the most logical thing in the world that on another planet are revolving around another sun that they have equally systems that we have. The question is to see if both civilizations want to look and find each other. And that is the step we are taking at the moment. Um, if you look at the UFO research, UFO research has got a, a much harder problem. The problems that SETI researchers had about 10 years ago, the UFO people have got today and they can't get out of it because people are not taking them seriously. So it is things like San Marino where you can exchange information. Uh, there are obviously people that are, uh, there who have got some very crazy ideas, but it's to listen to the people who've got very serious ideas. That is very important. Um, one day, hopefully soon, 
it's going to be possible to uh, look at UFO research in a different direction. I will give you an example. We have a, a number of uh, uh, physical experiments that are done on this planet which are repeatable with very simple means. For instance, from Professor Nimitz from the University of Cologne. He has uh, developed something which is called the microwave tunnel effect. Basically, you can transmit information over a distance in zero time. No one can explain this at all. A theory is that the quantum physicists who have built up their little quantum world, which started in the 20s and 30s, they started uh, making the particles which we know, which are inside an atomic uh, shell structure, that very quickly they had their little quantum world. And it is my personal opinion that they did this a little bit too quickly. They've forgotten some very important particles, and these particles are responsible for the microwave tunnel effect. If you're looking at this very basic thing of physics, it is the next step to say, well, if we're just finding that today and we can't explain it, another civilization somewhere else may have discovered physics in a totally different way than we have. And if you're now coming with uh, things like UFOs, I would like to define UFOs in two directions. People traveling large distances across our universe, one type of UFO, and time travelers from the future coming back to our period, which are, is the second possibility. And that would explain an awful lot of things which you hear about uh, biological experiments on people which have been uh, uh, abducted. That would explain an awful lot. Because these people, if they are time travelers, they are coming from a time they want to do uh, historical biological research. They want to look how their DNA was. If you are coming with things like that, it is very, very plausible indeed. As a scientist, I come with one comment, and this comment is to keep an open mind. And if you have an open mind, it may one day lead to a new direction. So that's the reason why I'm interested also in UFO technology, because there is too much in our world today that we just do not understand. And that is something which has was really got to be, to, to be understood. That is, that is the question of tomorrow. I will give you a wonderful example. We go back a few hundred years, and we are sitting here with very fine clothes on. I have my bowler hat on. You have your bowler hat on as well. And we are talking about what a wonderful world we are going to have that the steam engine has been developed. The world of today, these people then could not understand what we have today. So to make fantastic thoughts, that is the tool to make the world of tomorrow. And everything is okay, even in a direction of UFOs. Because that is the question that people then have to answer. Thank you so much. Yeah. Paul, you are the representative of the City League here in this Congress, and not only because you travel the world as the representative of the City League. What is presently uh, the attitude of the general public towards SETI in the United States? In the United States, and in fact around the world, because I am privileged to meet colleagues in all countries, there has been a very positive change in public attitude about